Right, you're watching TVC Breakfast. Let's get to our discussion now. Two weeks after suspension of the nationwide strike by electricity workers that threatened the nation into a blackout, a fresh strike is looming over alleged unwillingness of government to resolve issues of unpaid entitlements for former workers of the defunct power holding company of Nigeria. The workers, under the aegis of the National Union of Electricity Employees, NUI, and Senior Staff Association of Electricity and Allied uh, Companies alleged that the federal government, after almost nine years, has refused to pay entitlements of some of the workers of the defunct power holding company of Nigeria. Also, they say that they are angry that the two weeks given to the federal government to implement the 2019 agreement had elapsed. So, let's talk about this on this segment. Joining us is the Deputy National uh, Deputy President of Nigeria Labour Congress, Comrade Joe Ajero. Uh, it's nice to have you join us this morning, Comrade. Good morning. I think we can do better with the volume. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, okay. Now, uh, uh, the, the issue of the strike, you, you gave a, a warning strike some time ago and uh, Nigerians assumed that uh, there was an engagement between you that when I say you, I mean your union and the federal union. government, yeah. and uh, there was some level of understanding going on. Uh, can you bring us up to speed with uh, the level of things right now? Well, thank you very much. You know, there was a reaction from our side nearly six hours, and it was called off. And the, the federal government, through the Minister of Labor, set up a committee with a few weeks mandate to look into the issues and get back to them. And I think we're on the, it's not the fourth week running, not much things to have come up from there. And the usual way matters of this nature are treated in the whole country, as no exception. Uh, we are still going down there. Our actual was suspended for two weeks. And we are still at the point of benefit of doubt. But let me say this. The, the workers that are determined cannot be taken for granted. In as much as we are so sensitive and conscious of uh, the implication of the, our actions and our reactions to what the government, uh, uh, to the citizens of this country, who will not remain slaves forever. The era of slave master servant relationship is over. It's the employee employer relationship. And until the federal government understands this, certain issues that has to do with employee employer relationship in this country will not be addressed. Uh, we still have little patience, you know, still remaining until these matters are resolved. They are meeting, they are meeting. Uh, now, it seems they have shifted the meeting because of busy schedules of some government functionaries and ministers. They you now fix a meeting once a week on a matter you are asked to conclude within two weeks. But we will not uh, back out at this point. We want to see the end of this so that Nigerians, wherever they are, will know that from 2013 to date, this is what we have been passing through. Um, please, can you tell us what the sticking points are? Where is the negotiation? Who is conceding what and uh, what is the problem right now? Well, the negotiation is, is threat in terms of conceding, unless somebody wants to be unnecessarily uh, difficult, because those are negotiated items that we are waiting for implementation. The issue of short payment of those that worked in PSCN, you know, by 16 months. 16 months pension remittance. 16 months short payment in gratuity. That is the one that has some level of monetary value. The other ones are administrative somersault by those in government. A letter from a, a head of service to somebody was interpreted to be a circular. The two are not the same. And I think 
all of them are seeing results to it. But the major problem was that the various letters from the union, the interpretation of what they were doing, you know, uh, was not acknowledged by the office of the head of service. And at the point of negotiation following the mediation by the Minister of Labor, they said they don't reply letters to unions. So you can see that that was the communication gap that created the, the, the statement, in fact. So uh, to a very large extent, I will tell you that, well, uh, those ones may have realized their, their error, that you don't do a letter to somebody else and you generalize it to be a circular. The, sec the other point on the issue of promotion was clear as well. This is the way the promotion issues are being conducted based on collective agreement and based on condition of service. Should there be any, and that condition of service is subject to review by this December. If there is need for us to review the agreement, by December we'll review it. A certain board that was put in place who have not even met with them, they have not even raised an issue. Decreed that should be the other way around. And we say no, we should learn to respect the sanctity of agreements. You know, whether business agreements, whether collective agreements, reach input, uh, reach between social partners. Those are the issues, and they are straightforward. At the start of the warning strike, Comrade Ajero, the which was the one that your no, union no, embarked upon about two weeks ago. Can you hear me now? Please, can I get the volume, please? I'm, I can barely hear. Okay, let me uh, try to increase uh, the uh, volume of my voice while we work on it from our end. I was asking that at the start of the warning strike about two or three weeks ago, uh, the federal government had said uh, the dispute then was between the NUEE uh, and the uh, Senior Staff uh, Association. What do you make of that? Is that among the grouses that um, you have or that your union has against the government to, to preempt or to call for this uh, second phase of strike? You said they said the issues were what? Sorry. Initially, the federal government said the strike then was, uh, between, was due to a, a sort of dispute between the NUEE and the senior staff. Uh, association of the uh, employees. No, 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 no. Before you so go tell us about that, that's right. There is no issue between the two unions. The two unions took that action. The two unions were on one side during negotiation, and the federal government was on one side. The issues in dispute was the issue of entitlement and welfare of the workers. There was nowhere, either physically or or written anywhere where the two unions had issues on this issue. No issue at all between the two unions. It was the issue between the unions versus the TCN and the federal government of Nigeria. Over an agreement of 2013 that was not implemented, there was even an action in 2019, you know, that the, that the, uh, the Speaker of the House of Rep mediated and said, that this will be implemented in three months. I told him they won't. He said, no, we should take them for their words. And three months turned to three years. And it was equally brought up again. So there was no issue anywhere, you know, uh, between the senior, uh, senior staff association and Louis. None. Okay, uh, comrade, talk to us basically. In all of this dispute, it looks like, uh, or it, it, it seems like, Perceptively, uh, it's just about the welfare of uh, uh, the electricity workers and not necessarily about the, the energy sector or the power sector. Well, the, you can't, there will be no energy sector if there are no workers. You know, there will be no electricity if there are no workers. And like I said earlier, we had no agreement to say that whether we are paid, whether we are taken care of or not, we shall continue to work. We don't have such agreement. We don't, we don't have such an agreement that we should walk to the office and that those who have left service should go and die. We had an agreement, and we believe that anybody who goes to equity must go with clean hands. And you can't be selling your own responsibility 
and then you expect the other people, you know, to contribute with their blood for the sustenance of the sector. That is not. And if you understand the basis for the existence of unions, it is primarily for the interests of their members, you know, especially because if there are no workers, there will be no electricity sector. And if you don't want to take care of the electricity sector and you now think of, you know, power supply, it doesn't work. So what is going on now? Um, is the government telling you that they don't have money or is it that uh, the government does not want to pay? Well, the gov part of government magic is that uh, is the issue of whether the market operator, which was the product of the last agreement in 2019, that since there is a... Uh, uh, the liquidation of uh, USCN, that the office of the market operator, which incidentally is domiciled with the uh, transmission company of Nigeria, to foot the bill. Now, the market operator is saying that the BPE should foot the bill. Then there is equally the issue of, oh, we are going to remit only the pension deduction for 16 months. There were two components that was paid pension deduction remitted to the PFAs, and a gratuity component. And we now say, what happens to the 16 months underpayment in terms of gratuity? You know, those are some of the issues that we have now, you know, that are still flowing out from there. So there were, we will now ask the market operator and the BPE and all those ones to go and meet and discuss it. And since that time, they seem not to have come with anything positive that will resolve this problem. All right. Uh, of recent, uh, some of your you know, leaders in the union, some union leaders have also spoken out about uh, resolving the, in, the, the crisis in the energy sector where you uh, represent. Some, including yourself, going by reports, have said that uh, the problem lie or lies primarily with uh, distribution and, you know, the GENCOs are certain that, you know, privatization hasn't worked. Tell us a bit more about your stance. Well, the issue of the privatization not working is public knowledge. If you assess the situation when, uh, before privatization, to a very large extent, you still had, we, we still had 4,000 megawatts then. And whosoever was paying 1000 as the tariff then is now paying 5000 on the same 4000 megawatts. If you were having maybe five hours power supply then, and you had a population of maybe 10 million people, after today, after nine years, that population has increased to almost 12 million people. And you still have the generating capacity constant. You know, if it's constant and the demand is rising. So that is the situation. Nothing has worked. It, is, it has equally failed from the promises that they made that power privatization will lead to efficiency and those who take over will have technical competence and managerial ability as well as FDI, foreign direct investment, coming into this economy. None of such came in. We witness the issue of borrowing money from Nigerian banks and buying Nigerian utility companies, which created liquidity problem with the banks. And in the last few few weeks, the banks have taken over, you know, almost these companies, uh, distribution companies in the country. The banks are now running it, and they don't have the technical competence based on the money borrowed. And now the question for you to know the level of complication in this process is that the banks you are, that are now seizing utility companies, these utility companies were not bought you know, with bank money. They were not bought with bank money. Now, the, because the, the, they were, sorry, these utilities were not collateral for you to collect loan. Apparently, they were bought you know, before they collected. Now, if somebody collects loan from you to buy something. You must have presented 
they collapse uh, before you give the person loan. But the, the banks have taken over, and the federal government seems to say, okay, we are giving them one year to run this place. Right? So what was exactly what we said at inception, that apart from, you know, a, a technical competence, these guys don't have the financial muscle. And that has happened. And the generating companies who are still dollarizing, sorry, the federal government is still dollarizing the sale of gas to the generating companies. And none of the companies have even built one power plant for nine years up to this moment. Then why we are talking about the distribution companies is that if you even, you know, generate, these companies are still rejecting loads. If you watch in the last few days, apparently after that action and the, seize, and the seizure of about six companies, you see a slight improvement, which was equally assisted through the rent in the, what the distribution companies are. If they take that 4,000 megawatts that is available as of today, they are, you, you will notice it in the system. All right. Why we seem to be slow with the transmission company of Nigeria is that they have capacity of over 8,000 megawatts, right, 9,000 megawatts. Yeah, comrade, it's good to have you stay with us. Now, uh, talk to us about uh, the contract between Nigeria and Siemens of Germany and how it is uh, contributing to uh, what Nigerians expect in, in the power sector. Because uh, uh, from the promises of government, uh, by the end of this year, uh, Nigerians should have had some level of uh, constants uh, in ele electricity supply. How is that contract going? Well, the contract, as far as the union is concerned, is not in existence at the issue. Now, why am I saying this? The Siemens had earlier had contracts in Nigeria with the power holding company of Nigeria, you know, to do some work in areas like Aja and whatever. Those contracts were not executed. When this second contract was being, you know, contemplated, that was during the time of the other, the former chief of staff to the president, we wrote him and resisted because the contract was being run around, you know, having transmission network of 7,000 megawatts. And the union challenged him that at that time, you know, our network will accommodate over 8,000 megawatts. So if we have already in existence a network that can sustain 8,000 megawatts, why are you awarding contracts for 7,000 megawatts? That question has not been responded to up to this moment. So for us, if there's a contract to do something that was in existence, the union doesn't recognize it. So we talk less about it, whether it is going to add or subtract. And in fact, you know, where you have short for, it's not even in the transmission company. The capacity there can weigh 8,000 and we little left for 10,000 or more. So you have shortfall in generating capacity. But even if the 4,000 you are generating with the transmission is conveying to the distribution points, those ones they reject, reject load, either for economic reasons or because of technical issues. If their transformers are not working, they can't pick enough loads. So, and then you are awarding contracts uh, for a megawatt that is less than what we have. It doesn't make sense to us, and we refuse to comment on that uh, any longer. Are you saying that uh, this is um, the, the, the problem is that they, they want to replace what we have or that they want to add to what we have? You need to explain the, the technicalities of it, because if you have... Um, capacity that is about 8,000 megawatts. What you have been hearing is that uh, it cannot take more than uh, um, 5,000 megawatts. But if you say it can take more than 8,000 megawatts, you need to let us know this Siemens thing. Is it not supposed to add to the megawatts? Will we have more? Is it not more the merrier? Well, what we are saying is this. Let's assume that we have 8,000 megawatts capacity today. If in anticipation that the generating companies will generate up to that 8,000 megawatts, you are now threatening our network. And then Siemens is giving contract to take it from 8,000 to 10,000 or 11,000. 
it makes sense. You know, but if Siemens is not giving contract to strengthen it to seven thousand or six thousand or five thousand, the capacity will have you know gone beyond. I'm saying from here that it doesn't make sense, and I'm saying that is what exactly what is happening. You know, let the generating companies push out six thousand megawatts, and then if the transmission company you know could not take it, we now see it clearly that they are telling lies. They don't have the capacity. You can now award contract to these people to you know to strengthen it up to seven thousand, up to eight thousand megawatts. But I'm saying that that is not the case. The case is that these people were giving contract to do seven thousand megawatts, and I'm saying that. We, and at that time, we had up to 8,000 megawatts threat. And we wrote them challenging this. Our letters were not you, you need to explain you, it. You, you need to explain it to us. Are you saying that they want to upgrade the present um, capacity to 8,000 or that they want to add, they want to add 8,000? We need to get it very clear. Are you saying that they want to upgrade, upgrade it from 5,000 to 8,000? We already have it. Or that they want to bring eight thousand. Well, they ask them they got contract to upgrade something that is in existence. I don't know how else I can explain it. I say that as of today, the capacity in transmission company of Nigeria is clear that if you generate seven or eight thousand megawatts, they can carry it. Now, by the time you are given a contract for them to upgrade it to 7,000 or 8,000, and we, we now inform you that what you are doing is already what is in existence. Okay. You know, can you, if they are giving you contract, can you move it from 7 or 8 to 8 or 8 to 9 or 10? That would be a fresh contract. That is the situation. If there's no difficulty about that. It's like I have three cars. And you are awarding a contract for somebody for three cars. You know, since I have already have three, you know, you are ask, either asking him to get additional three cars to make it six. It can be that same three cars. That's the point here. Comrade Ajero, would it be uh, you know, correct to say that, um, you know, the privatization drive uh, in the power sector have has been you know a, a total failure how do we you know enhance the gains that may not be you know as much as we want how do we enhance these gains now you know for the greater good of all uh, and for the you know to better the sector because some have said uh, the problem lies in the transmission you know arm uh, the, the, the GENCOs, the distribution companies are also battling against the odds now, but the fact that the transmission um, is solely within the control of the government are, the, are soliciting perhaps for a means to also privatize that arm of the sector. Those people coming up with that, uh, the, those we call hustlers in the, in the power sector. They are the people that deceive the government into privatization in the first instance. I am not a spokesperson for Transmission Company of Nigeria, but I'm knowledgeable enough to know what is happening. If the Transmission Company of Nigeria was privatized along with these companies, there would have been total collapse of the system, total. And there would have been total collapse even in the economy of Nigeria. As of today, because the Transmission Company of Nigeria is like a boss, you know, that when you finish, when the generating company of Nigeria finish cooking food, if the food they cook is 2 kg, the transmission of company of Nigeria will carry it to the person that will share that food. That is the distribution company of Nigeria. That's their job. If you have not cooked food that is up to 10 kg, you won't say that that boss can carry it. And each time you cook so that, that of 2 kg or 3 kg, mm. it carries it to the person that is selling it. For you to stand somewhere and speaking, speculate yeah. well, that it can carry it when you have not cooked that capacity. You have not even cooked half of the capacity of what they, they have, they can carry. Then that, that, that is wrong. Now, what do I mean by the economy of Nigeria being affected? As of today, the, the PSCN was privatized at 4 Hundred billion. 
the federal government of Nigeria has put in over two trillion, and the economy of Nigeria is paying dearly for it. That is contribution from the federal government. Now, Nigerians who are paying one one thousand naira default today pay five five thousand naira. So left and right, you know, it has affected the economy dangerously. If you privatize it, the transmission company of Nigeria and make it a profit-making organization, if you are paying tariff of 5000 today, All right. in the first place, it will go to 8000 or 9000 All right, comrade. And that's not enough. Yes. The people but. that equally bought it will not have the capacity to even improve it. All the people that bought the generating companies as of today have not moved it beyond what, where it was, the same 4,000 megawatts as of today. All right, comrade. So increasing tariff around it. The same thing with discourse. Comrade, uh, let, let's put this thing black and white a little bit. Uh, in, in, a lot of Nigerians are saying that power generation or, or distribution, or at least the, the light they see, or electricity they see in their homes, have improved to some great extent. Uh, what, what do you say, what is responsible for, for this? Nigerian, those Nigerians, if they have been in this country for even the last 20 years, 30 years, they will, they will definitely know that during the rainy season, mm -hmm. that the hydropower plants are uh, their peak, and we notice this improvement. It is something that happens annually. There is no magic Nothing has happened. Nobody has built any new power plant that has been connected to the national grid in the last nine, ten years. So it's not an improvement that was done based on magic. It is something that happens every year, you know, when the water level increases. And that's exactly what you are seeing. There's also last year there was a lot of rain. We didn't have this kind of uninterrupted supply. The year before that, it was not that. Please, can you tell us what is different about the rain this year? Because we have not had this like this. The last time we had this like this was probably when uh, Buhari came to power and people were saying maybe it's body language of the president. The same thing happened when Jonathan came to, to power. Some people were calling it, calling it uh, Jonathan Light. But after a while, it fizzles out. But this has not happened when a government just came to power, uh, has, not, uh, has not just come to power, but it's fact, it's about living, and we're having this, and you're saying it is rain. Can you give us better explanation? No, there's no, there's no better explanation. Check through the data. Check through the... Let NCC Oshobo tell you what they are generating within these periods over the years. That's the data you need. It doesn't really matter if they ship your area to eight hours or nine hours, and they were giving you two hours before. In some of the places I went, I just left away, you know, in the last two, three days. You know, there's no light. Now, if they are doing shifting, looking at the cosmopolitan areas, giving them one entire power supply, go and check there are areas that have not gotten supply in the last two weeks, in the last one month. That shouldn't deceive anybody. If the generation is constant, unless you, anybody has proved to you now that they are generating 6,000 megawatts or 5,000 megawatts, and that is what they are sending to the field. This, I'm saying again, check the record. There is increase, you know, in this power generation within this period of the year. I equally say from the time the handover government to the time the rain starts coming, check if it is within this period of rainy season. It has never been the same between the period of rainy season and dry season. The, the, the hydro stations do better, and they use it more to stabilize the system, unlike the thermal stations, you know, which they use most of the time during the dry season and has a lot of consumption of gas. That's the situation. Look at comparatively the generating capacity and what has been generated over the years and now. If anybody proves that maybe we are not generating 6,000 megawatts, you would now say there's an increase in generation. But if it is manipulative process of giving some people, those who can even pay tariffs anyway, you know, more than the villages that are, cannot, they, they, they assume they cannot, then need, something needs to be done because 
electricity supply is equally a social service, and you can't neglect those rural communities. Are so, you saying that, sorry, are you right. saying that there is manipulation in the distribution? Is that what you are saying? That there is manipulation in exactly distribution, the not that there is that actually is that, that an in Abujana or in Lagos, you know, people don't get the same supply. Some people are off the grid for, for weeks, for months, while some people are celebrating the way you are saying uninterrupted. Mm. I'm saying that is not what is meant to happen. That is not it. So it should be across board. And um, t talking about that, uh, people, or there is a proposal on ground that states should be given the, uh, the autonomy to generate their own power. What, what do you make of uh, this uh, argument? Well, it, it is, I don't have problem if more generators are coming into the system. I don't have problems at all. But I have a problem with discriminatory generation based on natural resources. I have a problem because if you decentralize it, assuming every state generates, there is a state in Nigeria, Niger State, for instance, that the three major hydro stations are located in. There are states in Nigeria that you can generate either through hydro or through gas or thermal. Now, the other states have to depend on them. They have to sell power to other states. If that is the intent of this process or this law you are talking of, then we have to brace up for it. You know? So if the, if the federal government cannot, to a large extent, control that people in, in Lagos get supply the same way people in Abuja get supply, then we have to equally look at it very well and know whether the system of government, you know, we are running, whether it's enough, you know, whether everybody should explore their resources in their own state to the betterment of their people, not the federal system we are looking at. The very moment you look, you do it that way, then you understand the implication. Okay. We're, we have to leave you here now. Uh, thank you so much for your insight into all of the issues we have talked about uh, here. Uh, Comrade Joe Ajero, the Deputy President of the Nigeria Labour Congress, as well as the General Secretary of the Ni Nigeria Union of Electricity Workers. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you very much. Thank Bless you. you.